Hi and welcome to Baiju's 12th uh, board uh, preparation series. Uh, today our uh, topic of discussion is uh, nuclear physics, uh, then we have semiconductors and then we have uh, communication system. All right. Now let me uh, tell this uh, in advance that uh, this is a very short session and this is not about uh, uh, actually learning those things. I'm not going to teach the topics themselves. What I'm going to discuss is uh, what are the relative importance of different topics uh, uh, in these uh, chapters and perhaps in what manner should you prepare a particular topic and in what manner should you present a particular topic in your board exams right now in every session which i do on board exams there is one thing which i keep uh, attached uh, like you draw a diagram and label it properly okay and for this for that reason always uh, leave some spaces after your after your answers and uh, use those spaces later to fill in uh, fill it with diagrams and examples. Now having said that, let us start with uh, nuclear physics. Nuclear physics has basically these two parts. There is a theoretical part and then there is a uh, numerical part. The numerical part comes basically in the radioactivity. Now in the theoretical part you learn concepts of uh, what is binding energy, what is nuclear force, what is binding energy per nucleon. Why is binding energy per nucleon more important than binding energy itself? How to find the Q value of, of, of a nucleus? What makes a nucleus uh, uh, more stable, uh, a particular nucleus more stable than other nucleus, right? And then uh, three elements in that curve, three, uh, I would say nuclei in that curve must, uh, must be there in your memory. One in the beginning, one in the top, one in the end. Be very clear, what is it that uh, we represent on the x-axis, right? Is it atomic mass or is it atomic number? Because students do that mistake, uh, they don't, they, they overlook uh, if they have not prepared the chapter very well when it was actually being taught and uh, in the end when they are rushing through it then they, they don't uh, uh, be they, they are not very meticulous in uh, like noticing that uh, the x-axis is uh, is like mass number and not the atomic number and all that right so uh, so that graph is very important right that is one of the most important uh, things from the first part then you can expect uh, a one marker or two two marker question on uh, finding the Q value, uh, expl explaining why binding energy per nucleon is more important than binding energy itself. And uh, so yeah, basically that. And maybe you can expect a three marker question on nuclear fission and fusion, right? What is nuclear fission? Uh, supply it with an example. Uh, what happens in a nuclear fission? Does the energy uh, is released? Is the energy uh, absorbed? Why is the energy released? And what is that basic principle which uh, nuclear disintegration uh, follows? The E is equal to mc square law, right? So those kind of questions you can expect from uh, nuclear physics. So the topic itself has, doesn't have that great a weightage, but because it's a, not a very difficult topic, right? So you can always uh, score marks whenever the questions from nuclear physics are asked. Now from the other part, the radioactive part, uh, uh, you have uh, basically numericals that you can get uh, and you can get uh, to to fill in or to or to supply with uh, the radioactive uh, reactions so uh, when you get uh, uh, these numericals uh, the, the core of this numerical is is the radioactive decay uh, you remember it's a first order decay the 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 equation n equals to n naught due to the power of minus lambda t that equation is very important right what is lambda there? That is the decay constant. What is the definition of decay constant? Does, it, does the decay constant of a nuclear reaction uh, uh, change with time? Um, uh, what is half-life? Why, why is the uh, lifetime of, of a nuclear reaction infinity and why can we define a half-life? And how is half-life related to lambda? You can get derivations on that. that what is the relation between lambda and half-life or derive the half-life? What is mean life? What is the definition of mean life? And uh, how is it different from half life? So these kind of questions can be asked in one marker, two marker. A derivation can be asked for three marks uh, as well. So uh, these are the kind of questions you can expect uh, from this chapter. Then uh, regarding the reactions, they can ask that uh, there is this particular nuclei and it undergoes two alpha decays and one beta decay, and one gamma decay. And then what nuclei does it turn into, right? So those kind of questions, what happens when an alpha decay happens? What happens when a beta decay happens? How do you, first, first, in the first place you need to know, how do you represent a nuclei? What, what is the number which is written on the top? What is the number which is written on the bottom, right? We, you have to be very clear with uh, what these are. 
uh, if you're not then you'd not be able to understand the new uh, the, the reaction problems and if you don't understand the reaction problems uh, that is not a good thing because they are really easy that there's nothing much in them alpha decay happens in this much uh, by this much atomic number changes by this much atomic mass changes so there's nothing uh, rocket science into that like so uh, you have to be uh, be be clear with certain basic things and that's that's basically nu nuclear uh, physics for us okay then if i talk about uh, semiconductors now semiconductors uh, you start with the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors what are intrinsic semiconductors what or first of all what are what semiconductors in general uh, then uh, then there is a p type of semiconductor and there is n type of semiconductor so from this section you can expect a three marker or a two marker on there's a difference between intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductor. The difference between P type and N type electron jump from the conduction band to balance band, and what happens. And in in, in metals, what is the uh, what is the uh, difference between the conduction band and valence band? And what is the difference between semiconductors? And what is that number of that gap? And then what happens in case of insulators that it does not conduct? Uh, the explanation from the energy band uh, theorem. Okay, and from where does the band themselves arise? How does the uh, energy levels they mix up together and all that so this can be also a, 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 a long question and uh, energy band diagram has to be supplied with a diagram very simple diagram where where uh, the bands are either overlapping or not overlapping so uh, these questions you can expect from here and basically uh, what i'm saying is from the first part uh, a comparison question and uh, then an energy energy band question then you can expect questions from p-n junction diode which is a very important topic here like what is the p-n junction diode how is a p-n how does a p-n junction diode work what is the uh, different kinds of current that you have there what is diffusion current uh, and uh, what is a total what, what is what is the uh, the the voltage gap that you get right uh, why do you get that uh, what is why is this uh, potential barrier that gets created when a p and n junction meet together what is what what properties does it give rise to what is a diode so these kind kind of questions can be asked as two marker and three marker uh, but maybe not like uh, for 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 a like a four mark question or a six mark question but uh, you can expect questions from here see the point in boards is i cannot definitely say that whether this topic is important or this topic is not important i can say relatively yeah that i've seen that this topic has been asked uh, a lot and this topic has not been asked a lot so uh, but it's, we can only talk in probabilities you understand that so the the, the point is that if you're preparing for boards i would say that don't skip anything okay uh, read almost everything because uh, it is not that your your aim should not be to get like 60 percent or 70 percent marks you, sh you should study everything and you try to score as much as you po as possible because this is not extremely difficult thing to do right then uh, you can uh, get simple one mark two mark question on explaining what do you mean by forward bias what do you mean by reverse bias uh, and what is and what is the what is the condition of the pn junction and uh, in reverse and forward bias then there's this uh, topic of uh, uh, rectifiers you can get a question on uh, how uh, pn junction can work as a rectifier what do you mean by a rectifier then you have to supply it with diagram there are also some derivations uh, on what kind how does it change the waveforms those kind of questions so in such questions always draw the waveform don't don't uh, skip that because uh, of course diagrams important 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 then uh, you can also get questions on zener diode working as a voltage regulator so that is also a possible three mark question and then comes transistors so the problem with transistors in fact the problem the whole problem with this chapter i'll tell you is this it is a very volatile chapter of physics. Now, I have taught this chapter many times. I have learned this chapter many times. But uh, because uh, I am not into transistors in my day-to-day -day life, and I don't uh, encounter these things, and I don't think about them a lot, they just they just vanish from my memory. It's it's too much memory in this in this chapter. This uh, there are too many logical jumps that that happens in this chapter. So the problem with this chapter is that uh, I cannot expect to uh, to read this chapter sometime and then after like many many uh, days uh, someone would ask me some questions and I would like be able to answer that question immediately. So that is uh, kind of difficult. So I would suggest that uh, topic of semiconductors and topic of communication system must be kept for the end because uh, not to end like not 
very late but like kind of to, towards the end because these idea has to be fresh in your mind like in a transistor uh, what is a common emitter transistor what is a common base transistor in this what happens where do you put the load where you don't don't put the load what, what is it that is happening if you uh, how would you find the uh, the 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 resistance and all these all these things okay uh, you can also expect questions from uh, elect what is what do you mean by electrical res uh, resistivity of semiconductors and uh, voltage characteristics of zener diode that's that's an important question uh, a voltage characteristics of zener zener diode can be asked as a four marker also where uh, you have to supply it with that graph that you have okay and you have to explain uh, what different parts of that graph means and what do we mean uh, when we see you, they ask you a question where, where there's like a bunch of gates okay and uh, uh, a combination of gates and then they would feed in uh, zero or one from one and then you have to figure out what is the answer so you have to like take that signal to each, each gate and see whether the signal changes or not so for so for each logic gate what is the truth table what what does it do to a signal that has to be very clear in your mind in fact you should write it down somewhere and always for logic gates always use the diagram to solve solve the problem okay always uh, go through the diagram and uh, um, don't be like I mean like you diagram you there's I don't think there is any any other way like you, there's diagram in front of you you see what happens when I go through this uh, this part of the gate what happens when I go through this part of the what is the final answer that I, and always cross check but it's, it's easy because uh, it doesn't take a lot of time it's kind of also fun and uh, it's scoring so please don't skip logic gates uh, logic gates are important and they are also fun so that is about semiconductors uh, then uh, uh, the next topic that we have uh, is communication system now communication system is a very small topic uh, if, if it were for J, I I would have said that do this uh, topic maybe like a day before your exam if you have some time for an hour or so because very few questions are asked in J itself but for boards you can expect uh, a, a question from, uh, from communication system so the, my, my best suggestion for communication system would be for you to uh, read NCRT once more than that nothing is required okay go through NCRT once uh, take care uh, of what certain things that you need like uh, uh, what are the elements of communication system and how would you represent it using a block diagram which is a child's play it's very easy to draw those block, block diagrams but if you don't know then you're, you're seriously losing marks okay and if it is asked as an optional that's fine but if it is not then you lose marks for something which is so like you know silly and simple uh, so go through that topic don't leave it I mean please don't leave it Elements of communication system is what, uh, is what I was saying, uh, the, the block diagrams. What are the basic terminologies that are involved? What is a receiver? What is a transmitter? What do we mean by noise? What do we mean by medium? So these kind of questions can be asked as a one marker, two marker kind of questions. And how does the propagation of EM waves happen uh, uh, through, uh, you know, uh, in, in all these channels? Like from where to where it goes, from where to where it goes and, and all that. Now another important part which is there in, in communication systems is uh, modulation, right? So you have to be very clear with what is modulation, you have to be clear with uh, uh, what is uh, uh, frequency modulation, uh, what is uh, uh, amplitude modulation, what are different types of modulation uh, and uh, what is modulation index. So these kind of questions you can expect from this chapter but overall the chapter is not like greatly important. but not a, in fact nothing in boards should be a skippable uh, topic right so so that's what about uh, nuclear physics semiconductors and elements of uh, and communication system uh, in nuclear physics remember that the theoretical part would fetch you, you you'll have to write answers but there is this numerical part also which is very easy uh, for semiconductors remember that it's a volatile topic so keep it to the end or at least revise it two or three times or at least once before your examination and elements of communication system is very easy so if it comes and you if you're not writing it then you are uh, losing very uh, easily uh, available marks right so I, i'll take some questions now garv lalwani is asking sir please do some of the live sessions for class 10 students because they're also going to give board exam this year please 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 sir please oh, all right so we'll try to do the live sessions for 10th boards as well uh, i will uh, i will, will update you on that 
uh is photo cell important uh yes uh, photo cell uh, is an important topic but not a very important topic but like it, there's nothing much in it so you just read through it once maybe uh, see how the diagram is made you don't have to make, make a precise diagram how do you use transistor as a switch uh now this is a question that will require some discussion and uh, the session is not about that so I, I need to get into transistor and how does it work and how can you use it as a switch and all that um, I would suggest you in, the, in this point that to uh, to download our app because we have covered all these things beautifully and and at the point of 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 living in the 21st century is that everything has to be upgraded so when you have an app anytime you're sitting in your room you can go back and read this concept or on your own discretion you don't have to wait for a teacher to come and and teach you right whenever you feel like in the middle of the night you feel like you can you, you can watch those videos okay you can watch it at any rate you, you can watch some part and think for it think about it as long as you want you can go talk to you, any any of your teachers or any of your friends so that's the whole point so this would be the end of this session i hope uh, uh, this was uh, useful i um, request uh, you not request you i would say that i suggest you I, and it's a request because uh, it might be helpful to you so it's, there's no point not requesting and all that leave it but what I'm saying is go to our uh, YouTube uh, um, channel there you'd find really interesting videos uh, there um, and you understand what we are trying to do we are trying to create engagement uh, to, towards different topics and uh, do download our app and uh, be updated with the activities which happen here because we keep uh, these live sessions again and again so that um, you, you're thorough with what is currently going on uh, in the subjects all right with that uh, thank you